Thank you, it's nice to be here. Uh, you might wonder why I'm sort of more formally dressed. And when, in preparing for this, I talked to my wife and I said, well, honey, what should I wear? I'm thinking of wearing what I always wear to teach. And she said, are you sure? And I said, yeah, I mean, I wear it every day. I mean, what's wrong with that? And she said, well, it kind of makes your stomach look a little big. So uh, <laughs> thanks for the tip, honey. Um, <laughs> is it showing? I should maybe button my coat? <laughs> well, hopefully it's not too bad. Well, you know, I wasn't always uh, someone who battled with the, the midsection. Uh, back in college, actually, I ran uh, four seasons uh, for the Boston College Eagles, cross country and track. And so back then, I actually weighed 30 pounds less. I was in like super good shape. And college was for me, as it was for many people, uh, you know, an amazing, really fun time. You know, I was running cross country for Boston College, and I was later the editor in chief of the student newspaper, and life seemed so open, just full of possibilities. It was a really exciting time. And all those possibilities and all that, that great potential changed dramatically one day. I got a phone call that changed my life forever. I got a call from Jennifer, and uh, I don't even remember exactly the full contents of the, of the call, but I do remember the two words that changed my life completely. The two words were, I'm pregnant. I was stunned. I, I literally couldn't believe it. And I was so filled with different emotions and different feelings, I didn't know what to do. So I went to something that always brought me kind of peace and comfort. I put on my running shoes, got ready, and went out into the cold Boston night. And I ran really hard, I ran as hard as I could. And I screamed at the sky. I couldn't believe this was happening to me. All my dreams, my hopes of graduate school, all my future plans were suddenly collided with this big news. And once I stopped running, you know, I realized you can't run away from your problems forever, but once I stopped running, um, I figured out a second coping method, and that was pouting. So we went to the prenatal, you know, visits, and I pouted. And we went to the Lamaze class, and I pouted. And I was uh, spending the summer painting houses to make extra money for my new family, and I pouted. And I got an uh, uh, email from my roommate, Chad, my college roommate, and he said, uh, well, Chris, how's your summer going? And I said, wow, I'm doing lots of painting. And he wrote back to me, he said, well, that's wonderful. I'm glad you're exploring your artistic side. <laughs> yeah, he thought I had on a little beret and I was you know, out there like Monet or something. And so I wrote back to him, I said, yes, Chad, um, I'm doing a lot of painting and it's, it's, it's exterior work and it's a kind of domestic setting, usually bichromatic. Uh, <laughs> And uh, he finally got the idea. So I kept on uh, pouting and I was afraid. And this fear really continued and the pouting continued, you're not gonna believe this, all the way into labor. I'm really regretful of the way I acted towards my wife through all this. During labor, um, the nurses were being nice for her, thank goodness. And uh, we all noticed that the fetal heart monitor was, uh, something was going, going weird. You know, the, the baby's pulse was kind of going l lower and lower, and then suddenly there was no pulse. The doctors ran into the room, prepper for a C-section. People were bustling around, someone told me, get on scrubs and get ready, put on the mask. So they rushed Jennifer in for an emergency C-section, they rushed me in there, and as I was running into the, you know, the emergency room getting ready for the C-section and the baby's dying and I thought my wife's dying, I suddenly realized how incredibly valuable they both were to me. I realized how if they were to die, I would be completely devastated. I finally realized how much I really should have been appreciating her and appreciating this new life. As they rushed her into the emergency room and her, had this literally the scalpel in the hand, the baby's pulse rate came back up. And then just within a few minutes after that, the, our baby Elizabeth was born. And that day, literally to this day, was the very best day of my whole life. So here's Elizabeth. And I went from absolutely feeling devastated and feeling like the most important things in my life were literally dying to being overjoyed. I had such a big smile on my face. The next day, I was sore. I was like, God, my, face, my facial muscles are hurting because I was smiling so much and so overjoyed at this, at this great day. And why was I overjoyed? Well, you know, before the baby was born, I thought of the baby only as a drain, as draining my very meager financial resources 
as draining my emotional resources, as draining and getting rid of the dreams I had of going to graduate school and becoming a professor. And I realized that really I thought of this child like a little vampire, sucking the life out of all my, <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah, this child as vampire, <laughs> sucking the life out of all of my dreams and hopes and, and ambitions. Um, but what I found, the reality was that becoming a parent, more than anything else I've ever done in my whole life, has enhanced my life. Becoming a father has added a whole new dimension to life that's wonderful and rich and unbelievable. It's a little bit, I tell people that don't have kids, it's a little bit like going through puberty, right? You can, you can talk to a little kid who's eight or nine and kind of describe what's gonna happen and how all of a sudden you'll have these new interests and the world will be different. And for me, that's what becoming a father was about, seeing the world in a whole new different way. So what changed? Well, one thing that changed was I had much more gratitude. Here's a picture of my mom and dad holding Elizabeth shortly after she was born. I realized only after having kids how much I was indebted to my own uh, parents, in particular uh, for adopting me, for raising me up. I realized also that I had a great deal more of humility. Humility is a word that means, comes from Latin being inclined to the ground. And the idea is that when you have humility, you're grounded. And children have a way of doing this for you. On Easter, one Easter, I remember walking Elizabeth over to the bathroom, and uh, she goes in there and does her thing and stuff, I'm very nice. And when she comes out, she says, oh, Dad, I'm, you know, I did it, great. I said, honey, did you wipe her butt? Oh, yeah, I did. Good, so I go in there and check and see. She did wipe her butt. Uh, but she wiped her butt with the white cashmere sweater of the host. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that helped me grow in humility a little bit. Um, uh, also, I found out later that having children reduces divorce. An interesting book that talks about this is David Buss's Evolution of Desire. They, he found that couples that have no children have a 39% likelihood of divorcing. Couples with one child have a 26% likelihood of divorce. With two children, 19%, and with four children or more, a less than 3% likelihood of divorce. It's quite amazing. This is a picture of Elizabeth in uh, throwing a coin into Trevi Fountain. Part of the gift of children is reliving the experiences you've had, going through all those stages of life again. And one of the most wonderful occasions I had was recently. At LMU, you get to walk your children onto stage if you're a professor when they get their degree. And so as I waited for Elizabeth to walk up there, I thought about all the things she had given me, all the gifts and ways she made my life richer. Right, the first communion, the violin lesson, teaching her to drive, helping her to go to prom. And as I was waiting for her to receive her degree and walk up with her, I was really having to hold back tears. And finally the moment came, we got on stage, we were with the chair of the board of trustees as she got her degree, and I was unbelievably proud. And as I looked out, I saw thousands of other parents there that were also proud. And we all knew at that point that it was a myth that children are like vampires. Thank you very much.